swear to God, if I hear the term GDPR and Webflow in the forums one more time, Let's end this debate once and for all. How do you make your Webflow website GDPR compliant? The truth is you can't, not 100%. But, and we'll get into this, I don't think that matters. So just to pre-warn you, I am not an expert in GDPR. If you are seriously worried about GDPR, don't go on the forums, hire someone to talk to about it. If you are somewhat worried and just want a straightforward answer, then this is the video for you. And I'm gonna do my best with my years of experience kind of seeing this sort of stuff in action and working with companies who have to abide by GDPR to give you the best information and the most up-to-date information as possible. But don't sue me if you in turn get sued. This is not legal advice. Let's just talk about what GDPR is. And it's, it's a combination of two things. It's both hard and soft. The hard side is about how you store other users' data, what you collect and how you store it, right? That's physical bits of information and where you store it as well. And it's, it was something brought about by the EU and they basically wanna make sure that you are handling precious user data in a responsible way manner. The problem is, which already kicks off on the wrong foot, this only applies to European citizens and they say if a European citizen is visiting your website you must do x y and z, right? Problem is unless you're literally blocking European people from your website um, then you are you have to make every single website GDPR compliant or block European people. I just is stupid but Let's say, for example, you are allowing everyone to visit your website and you just want to put a cookie policy or whatever in there. The soft side of it is if someone requests that data, what processes do you have in place to let them access that data and how you delete that data or, or, or store that data, right? And this information is presented to the user in a privacy policy. And there are plenty of free privacy policy generators out there, but ultimately you have your cookie policy that outlines exactly what you do with people's data, how you collect it, and how you're gonna give it to them, who they should contact should they choose to want that data. So there's the cookie policy side of things. Then you have to alert someone and they have to actively allow you to collect their data by clicking OK on a typical cookie banner. Now I've done an episode, I'm going to reference other episodes because I think in drips and drabs I've actually covered all of this stuff. Your cookie policy should basically disallow any tracking to happen until they've said yes. The more advanced that your cookie policy gets, the more fine control you might want to give someone. Now I've always seen essential cookies. And that's something I often opt with because I don't do adverts. I just I just wanna see and improve my website for my user's um, experience, basically. So if they don't check anything, then you shouldn't be collecting that information. Like I say, I'll leave a link down in the description for you to watch my episode on doing cookie policies. You can choose to use a cookie policy library, but to be honest, I think they're just bloated and it's such easy code to make it happen. There's really no point. Learn JavaScript, get better at web development. The next is actually user data. Like um, I'm talking data that can be attributed to a person needs to be stored in, in a, a safe way. That makes sense, right? You don't wanna be just storing people's usernames and, and uh, personal addresses and bank details and just willy-nilly pieces of software, right? You want to make sure you would want that data to be secure. But the other catch is that that data needs to be stored inside the EU. God knows why, but it does. And what happens is if Webflow, if you, if you create a form in Webflow and you submit that data, that's going into the database of Webflow. We need to bypass that until they're storing that data in the EU. It's a really simple thing for Webflow to do. I don't know why they aren't doing it. We can bypass that. And once again, I'll reference you to my Webflow Forms Masterclass where we learn how to use an AJAX request to send data to any custom backend that you might have. And I'm sure since then, there's been third party providers that just accept form submissions that are GDPR compliant. So basically you're gonna to wanna to either do it yourself using the, the Webflow Forms Masterclass as a, a, an AJAX function, 
or go out there and find, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll link a few below for you, just for you. If you're enjoying my content, you've watched a few of my videos and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing and give the old video a like if you are enjoying it as well. It helps me grow, it helps me earn money do this, right? If I don't say it, it won't happen. Now, on with the video. The other one which I learned recently is Google Fonts. And this is really simple. For whatever reason, uh, the native Google Fonts inside a Webflow is not GDPR compliant. And they warn you about this, it's pretty, pretty obvious. But easy way to fix this is just go to fonts.google.com, find your font and download it, and then upload it to Webflow, just like they tell you in the instructions. Really straightforward, that is completely GDPR compliant. The biggest one here is the server itself. So where is this website hosted? Now, I'm not sure how many EU citizens care that a website is hosted on a, a particular server. It's stateless, so there's no personal information there. It's just the files that the website runs on. For whatever reason, the EU think that's a, that's a necessary uh, thing that we need to, to worry about. But it's really not, and this leads into kind of my overall summary about GDPR. We can't do anything about uh, Webflow being hosted in, in San Francisco or wherever, wherever their servers are. But unless we are doing our own caching and preventing users from ever touching with that served website, we, we, we cannot make it GDPR compliant. So we get to my potentially controversial hot take. Kill me down in the comments if you do not like this. In fact, open the discussion up. I feel like GDPR is kind of like the DVD piracy adverts used to say. It feels like it's this big movement that has been provoked by the European Union that has never actually been enforced at all. Doesn't mean to say that they won't, but here's where we get to Webflow websites. The Webflow websites that you're likely to be producing are small fish. They're not gonna go after you and charge millions for storing your website in a server in San Francisco. We can send the form data to the EU. We can prevent the tracking data from being sent out. We can do everything else around it to make it GDPR compliant, but we can't change anything about the server unless we use some sort of reverse proxy or something like that. But they're not gonna go after someone just because you're storing that. You know, if you're doing everything else correctly, they're not gonna go after you. It's just, I can't see it happening. It's, they'd rather charge millions, potentially even billions to big organizations who are storing people's personal data in plain text. There are just much bigger fish to fry in this whole GDPR thing. So I personally do not worry in the slightest about a Webflow website that I'm producing that it is not GDPR compliant. Um, I'll do my bits and bobs and I'll, I'll be uh, respectful of the people visiting the website totally. But beyond that, it's just it's just impossible. And, and uh, you know, it should be a priority that Webflow makes this GDPR compliant. So it wouldn't surprise me if something comes around pretty, pretty soon that makes all this worthwhile anyway. So I've told you everything you can do to make your website GDPR compliant. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you do know anything else, I would still love to learn about something that I missed. So that is my hot take on GDPR and I bid you adieu.